Welcome to Devotions by Christian Outdoors with Pete Rogers. Today we're going to look at the book of Mark, chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. I'm going to read it and then we're going to discuss it. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man, Cheer up on your feet, he's calling for you. And throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, Jesus said, your faith has healed you. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. There are certain nights that pastors just don't forget. I remember very clearly sitting in the waiting room of the ICU with a family trying to decide what we're going to do, Try, whether to remove their husband, father, and grandfather from life support or to let him linger there. What were we to do? What were we expected to do? It's oftentimes when expectations are uncertain that we feel abandoned and alone. Being an athlete during my younger years, I played a lot for, for a lot of different coaches. The expectations of these coaches was vastly different from one another. And when you change teams or graduate to a new level, it meant learning new tactics and new expectations from each coach. And then after I graduated seminary and started pastoring churches across South Carolina, I can tell you if there's ever been a true statement about churches, it's that no two are the same. The expectation from the different congregations are vast. And because it's normal for them, they never vocalize their expectations. They just assume you're going to know. One congregation I pastored expected the pastor to have weekly visits to the active members and to those who were shut in their homes. While another church I served only wanted me to preach on Sunday and bury the dead when the, it was necessary. These polar opposites, these two churches, make it challenging for any pastor to find a middle ground. And while serving these churches, I learned, and often the hard way, that it's breaking these expectations can cause conflict to arise. It's when these expectations are not communicated, how's one to know what to do? But through all this, I learned, it's when the expectations are broken where we are hurt, embarrassed, humiliated, and hardened. It's, it is in broken expectations where we find the quarry of rubbled emotion and a pit of leftover pride. As a family pondered that decision, one of them turned to me and said, Preacher, what should we do? This is one question pastors hate getting because there's no right answer. If I were to say, well, let's keep him alive, some of the family would be upset. If I say remove him from life support, other members of the family would be upset. And I really don't want the responsibility of letting him die or keeping him alive. So I simply said, what do you think Jim would want you to do? And I left it like that. Expectations can be burdensome or freeing. And one of the best examples of how Jesus dealt with expectations is found in the scripture we read this morning. Mark tells us that Jesus is leaving Jericho with a large crowd. He's teaching as he walked from Jericho to Jerusalem. In the midst of this lesson, while Jesus is teaching, someone interrupts him. The blind man, Mark tells us, is known as Bartimaeus. As Jesus is walking, Bartimaeus cries out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. At the sound of his desperate plea, people were telling him to be quiet. Stop interrupting. We can't hear the message. But Bartimaeus was all the more stubborn or desperate, and he cried the louder, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus heard him. He stopped in his tracks, and he called him over. Notice how Mark tells this part of the story. I love how Mark chooses these words. And throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. See, Jesus heard his plea, and he immediately jumped to his feet and ran to Jesus, making his way through the crowd, feeling his way towards the voice that called him, and no doubt the disciples went and escorted him over. When he arrives, Jesus asked him the one question I believe he's asked all of us in our lives. When he arrives, Jesus asked him the one question he's asked all of us in our lives. I believe the question Jesus posed to Bob and Bartimaeus is the same question posed to all of us who have ever tried to follow Christ. It's a question that he is asking you now as you listen to this show. 
is a question that is just as relevant to you, the listener, as it was to Bartimaeus. Perhaps you've become blind by our world and don't see the glory of God that is right before you. Maybe you can see the sun rise in the east, but never believed in the sun rising from a tomb. Maybe you see clearly how to walk through doors, but never see the door to heaven. There are those of us who see well enough to avoid bumping into furniture, but who flounder through life. Who see well enough to recognize night from day, but who live in the dark. The question Jesus is asking Bartimaeus is the question that I submit is being asked to all of us right now, today. The question that Jesus is posing is a question essential to finding our place in the kingdom of God. The question finding its way from the lips of Jesus has penetrated everyone who has ever heard the gospel. When Jesus looks directly at Bartimaeus and says, what do you want me to do for you? We've heard the call. We've all cried out to God in moments of desperation and pain and tried to get his attention. And when we finally get it, he looks you straight in the eye and he asks you this simple question that leaves most of us feeling isolated and alone. What do you want me to do for you? Tell me what you want. What are your expectations? What are your desires? What are your wishes? What do you really want? And as those words find their way to us, we listen to them, but we don't hear them. Because to hear them forces us to act. To acknowledge the question is to understand what the expectation is. And we are uncomfortable with the expectation. You see, I believe Jesus has asked all of us that question at one time or another in our lives. I believe he may be asking you this same question as you listen today. What do you want me to do for you? There are many of us who have cried from the pits of our lives. You found yourself on the fringe and you called out, Jesus, Jesus. And then when Jesus asked, what do you want me to do for you? You turn away. I've come to believe there are many who have been in the shoes of Bartimaeus. We have cried and cried out to God in desperation. We have pleaded for God to hear us and begged for a response. We have screamed in anger and in anguish for God to answer us. And then Jesus responds, What do you want me to do for you? And then we scramble for answers and excuses. As we continue to read this verse, we see the best answer available is found in the next sentence. When Jesus asks us this question, we overthink it. When we, when he heard your cry and called you over, you struggle to find the right answer or the answer you think he wants. When in actuality, what he wants is your heart's desire. The answer is simple as Bartimaeus stated. Jesus asked Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? And Bartimaeus responded simply, Lord, I just want to see. Notice he didn't beat around the bush. He didn't give a vague answer around his desires. He didn't ask for success. He didn't ask for a safe retirement account, a winning lottery ticket, a big house, or a beautiful woman. Bartimaeus said simply, Lord, I just want to see. I'm afraid too often that when we pray, we substitute the name of Jesus with that of a magic genie. Many of us approach prayer like we're rubbing the lamp, waiting for the genie to emerge and grant our every wish. I want this, God, and I want that, and you better not let me down. And we walk away disgusted at the genie and just as blind as when we arrived. We walk away and say, God, you had your chance and you blew it. And then we wonder why we continue to flounder through this life. When Jesus asks you this question, your response needs to be simple and straight to the point, as was the response of Bartimaeus. I believe we need to respond to Jesus with simply, Lord, I just want to see. And as we give that response, we need to realize that with the vision, there comes certain expectations. We've been asked, we responded, and now we can see. And for many of us, we don't like what we see. Because for the first time in your lives, you begin to recognize sin. Now that you can see, your conscience begins to recognize the wrongness. Now that you can see, you begin to understand the inadequacy of your participation in the worship life of the church. Now that you can see, you have a whole new world to explore, the world as a child of God. Now that you can see, God expects certain things from you. You see, just as God, just as we expect God to listen when we pray, just as we expect God to respond when we beg, just as we expect God to react to our messages, God also expects certain things of us. Nothing too difficult, nothing too outlandish, just a behavior that reflects him and his love. 
What does God expect of us? Thankfully, once again, we turn to the scripture and find the answer. In the book of Micah, chapter 6, verse 8, it tells us, What does the Lord expect of you but to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God? See, it really is that simple. Be just, love, walk humbly with God. These devotions by Christian Outdoors are designed for you, the listener, to have a guideline for what God's expectations for you are. They are simply, they are simple and clear, not necessary in any order of importance. They are all important. For the next several weeks, every Thursday, we will look at the things contained in the Bible that God expects of us as we live a disciplined life. We will explore his desires for us and we will see the expectations. We will see what is expected in the life of a disciple. We will see for many of us for the first time exactly what it is God wants for us and from us in this personal relationship. We will look and we will understand what thing God expects of us and how we ought to respond. You've been blind for too long, and I believe God wants to heal your blindness. I believe many of you today are crying out to God, Lord, I want to see, but you do not know what the vision may entail. You're not sure what would be expected of you as you enter into a whole new world as a disciple of Christ. So as the children of God who are seeking, I encourage you to join me as we dive deep into the scripture and we see the marks of a disciplined life and become a transformed people of God. Thank you for listening to Devotions by Christian Outdoors with Pete Rogers. Stay tuned next week for another episode.